Okay, everyone, new legislation. This is your new Bible, okay? Old Testament, gone. This is a new one. We go by this. Where are the tables and chairs? Page 106, paragraph four. We're implementing new standing up workstations. They obviously haven't arrived yet, but... Uh, where are we meant to work in the meantime? Sorry, Brendan. Page 104, paragraph three. All questions during workplace briefings have to be pertinent to the worker's position. You are queue attendant. You can only ask questions about the queue. No, I'm the queue manager. No, queue attendant. Read your name tag. The other one. Queue attendant. Okay. Speaking of name tags, I need you all to wear yours all the time. That includes you, Ken. Ken. Yeah. You need to wear your name tag. Oh, my name doesn't fit on a tag. Well, you know, make it fit. Make it fit. <laughs> In a streamlining effort to streamline the processing process, Sally, your department's no longer natural disasters. It's now called the big stuff. <laughs> Ken, your department's called the little stuff. <laughs> Yanni, please. Yes, Sally? Hypothetically, if a volcano erupted and the molten lava destroyed a really small shed, would that be big stuff or little stuff? Hmm. Yeah, about volcanoes, Sally. Um, can you see me in my office after the meeting, please? Make sure the door's open. What? What? My name's John Karajanis, I'm head case manager at Hope Gully Welfare, and I've been here for 27 years. I love my job. John. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, what time would you like me in your office? Oh, look, there's probably no need for that now. We can just do it here. I'll get straight to it. The volcano claims. I need you to stop processing them. There hasn't been an active volcano in Australia for centuries. Oh, yes, I know, but I just think it's good to be prepared. I mean, mm. I like to be prepared for hot lava explosions. Sally, let's focus on real claims, no more hypotheticals, OK? I thought you liked girls that showed initiative. Initiative's good, but we're a government agency. Too much initiative can be very dangerous. <laughs> I like danger. Well, I like bungee jumping, but not at work. No more volcano claims, OK? Sure. You know, just one last hypothetical. Last one, I mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. um, workplace sexual relationships. Terrible idea. <clears throat> right. Um, but what if, hypothetically, uh, one employee desired another employee, mm -hmm. I don't know, just say it was like she desires her boss, and um, uh, he's an older man and, you know, really attractive, very handsome and married, sure, but just hot. Mm -hmm. What if, hypothetically, she had been keeping her feelings to herself for a really long time? Um, hi. <laughs> oh, sorry. Am I interrupting something? Um, you know what? Email me, John. Yes, I'll, I'll respond appropriately with that hypothetical. Uh, I'll, I'll probably get back to you via email regarding that question and in due course. Hi, honey. Everything okay? Forget about me. What's this hypothetical I just walked in on? Oh, look, I'd love to discuss it, but workplace confidentiality prevents you me from You work in a welfare it. office. This is not the CIA. What did she say? So I cannot divulge that information. It's the code of silence. You break that code of silence or I'll break your... I feel hot. Do me over the table. Don't. Come on, what are you waiting for? Yeah, but we eat here. I can't... No, there's a broom closet. Um, I am married, been happily married to Despina for 25 years and uh, we are yet to have children but we are working on it. What you doing there, Ken? Just looking into some cases for Bessie Baker and Logan Conway. What's going on with your name tag, mate? I did, like you said, I put on one tag. Yeah, but <laughs> only a hawk with a pair of binoculars for eyes can read that. You need to be able to read it, Ken. Fix it, please. Okay, okay yeah, copy that. So, listen, um, I need some advice. Shoot me. <laughs> the expression is just shoot. <laughs> Not sh <laughs> just shoot. Yeah, close enough, don't worry. Yeah, so 
hypothetical, right? Just say there was a guy who worked in an office about my age, been married about at the same time as me, but not me, okay? And he worked with this young girl with red hair, about Sally's age, looked like Sally, but not Sally. And they were in a room together and she almost threw herself at him. And although he was flattered in a weird kind of way, he felt afterwards that he'd been sexually harassed. And he always went by the rules. And the rules say you've got to report sexual harassment. Should he report it or not? We have a saying in my country, okay? If a dog of anger is sleeping, better not kick it in the balls in case it wakes up and bites your face off. <laughs> I get it, I get it. See, I knew you'd know what to do about sexual harassment. <laughs> My name is Brendan B. Berry. I'm the queue manager here. Um, I manage all of the queue. Hey, Brendan. Mm. Can I ask you about an event that didn't happen? A hypothetical? A hypothetic, yes. Mm. There is a young woman who is just like Sally, mm. but not Sally, who tried to make sexy time with her boss, who is just like John, but not John. And then the boss, who is like John, asks a young man from Africa who is like me, but not me, and says that the reason why he asks is because young men from Africa must know something about sexual harassment. Why does the boss who is like John think that young men from Africa must know something about sexual harassment? Uh, some of the best parts of the job, I really like uh, the casual, casual clothes days on Fridays and the Christmas parties and Sally. Come in. John, do you have time to answer a very quick hypothetical? Shoot. Let's just say that there's this young woman of fiery red hair, bestowed with such beauty that when she walked, angels sung her name. A woman who, in a state of what was sheer madness, made a pass at her bald boss, who interpreted her devotion of love as an act of sexual harassment. He then relayed this information to another colleague, and in doing so, insinuated that because of his immigration status, that he would have a familiarity with sexual harassment himself. Who then, in turn, vented his frustration in the lunchroom to a man whose head of hair was not only curly, but also full. A man who cared so much for this woman, that if the boss were to report her actions, he would go on strike immediately. So, hypothetically speaking, do you think this boss has the temperament and patience required to managing all the queues at this hypothetical place of employment? John! John, you didn't answer the question! John! Oh, I could have just let them go. John! The boy Vanel, the whole, no, the whole four. Where's your daughter? We need the whole boy Vanel family. Go get it, please. Grand Duke Terence C. Serio. Yep, uh, your payments have come through. Summer Spectre. Oh, hi, Summer. Hi. Yeah, great. So uh, you'll be in room three. Adam Schmel. Schmel. Adam Schmel. 